Okay, let me share my screen. And first of all, thank you very much for having me. Um, do you see my screen? Yes, indeed. Okay. Um, maybe a, a, a briefly introduce myself. My name is George Abraham. I'm Dutch, so my apologies for my sometimes terrible English. Um, uh, I, I run two organizations, uh, the Global Anti-Scam Alliance and Scam Advisor. We, however, have only one goal, and that's help consumers worldwide not get scammed. Um, the Global Anti-Scam Alliance is a non-profit organization where we bring together policymakers, law enforcement, consumer authorities, cybersecurity organizations, banks, telecom operators, anybody who's in one way or another uh, uh, vested in protecting consumers from scams. Scamadvisor.com is a online algorithm where consumers can check if a website is legit or possibly a scam. We have more than six and a half million consumers every month checking uh, several websites usually, uh, and we scan about 1.5 million new domains as a result, and we update about our data for about 2 million. And our data is being used by antivirus companies, search engines, social media, uh, internet filters uh, to protect consumers. Um, briefly, uh, I've uh, already discussed this. Uh, you can also go to our website. Feedback is always welcome. We know we're not perfect uh, because scams are not black and white. Um, uh, where the, the distinction of where a scam stops, uh, oh, sorry, where a legit website stops uh, with poor service and where a scam starts is really a, a twilight zone. Um, maybe good to know that in 2024, we plan to extend from not only domains and URLs, but also to email addresses, phone numbers and cryptocurrency addresses to protect consumers better. Taking one step back, uh, scams are weird in the sense it's the only crime you can fall for. You are voluntarily uh, giving the criminal your data, your, uh, your money, and that makes it a very different crime from other crimes where money or data is being taken from you without your permission, without your consent. Um, as I said, also, they're, they're in the gray area. Uh, um, uh, how we define scams is when there's a huge gap between the product or service being offered and what's actually being delivered. Um, and sometimes that distinguish, distinguishing uh, scams from bad service is, is actually pretty hard. Uh, scams have been around since uh, humanity uh, 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 rose. I mean, the Egyptians uh, already were scamming people. Um, it was good luck if you had a mummified cat in your house in old Egypt. And um, they found so many mummified cats that we would have no cat alive nowadays because we would have driven them to extinction in, in, in old Egypt. And what actually happened is that most of the mummified cats, and there are millions in old Egypt, uh, don't contain a mummy of a cat. Uh, it just contains rubbish, uh, uh, but the, they were sold as, as the real thing. Um, nowadays, uh, things, of course, changed. And on, on Scam Advisor, the most searched kind of, of scam are online shopping scams, where, as you can see, a product is being offered for a price too good to be true. Um, I always ask, uh, what else do these uh, 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 products have in common? And usually people see, yes, they all have four wheel, they have wheels, but the last thing they have in common is they're all on Facebook. Uh, the second most popular scam next to online shopping are the invis investment and cryptocurrency scams. And these are a few screenshots from websites which we think have a very high likelihood of being scammed because they're offering a return on investment, which is too good to be true. Um, but nowadays we see that crypto scams and investment scams are becoming way more so sophisticated. Uh, two years ago, uh, Squid Game was a very popular game and a scammer uh, launched a website saying he was going to launch this crypto, uh, the Squid Game crypto coin and you could already invest. And within five days, he was able to collect $3.4 million dollars before Netflix was able to turn uh, turn off the website. Um, some scams are rather obvious. I mean, but still you would be amazed how many emails we got. And I have to admit, especially from males asking us, hey, is this legit? Can I really make money? 
Uh, no, you cannot. Um, and some scams are really incredible. Um, there was a 65 year old lady in Japan um, who became romantically involved with a scammer. The scammer said he was an astronaut. He wanted to, uh, uh, to come back to Earth and he needed 35,000 euro. And unfortunately, she paid him. Uh, but scammers are really vicious. Uh, an example is of what we've seen in Texas. Uh, the state of Texas introduced a new legislation that you could no longer buy abortion pills. And already three months before this legislation came into effect, scammers started setting up online stores, offering uh, abortion pills, and especially targeting young women in the state of Texas. And the problem here is the scam didn't stop with the product not being delivered and the money taken. It then turned into an extortion where the victim was told that if they didn't give more money or provided other services, uh, they would inform their family and friends. Uh, I'm going to skip this one because the sound doesn't work, but we are often being asked how big are online scams? And for the last five years, we have always published our global state of scam report. This year, we took a slightly different approach. We did not ask governments and law enforcement in 42 different countries how much money is lost, how many victims there are. We asked nearly 50,000 consumers. Uh, and that gave us completely new insights. Um, one of the new insights we came across is that 69% uh, of all the participants are either confident or very confident that they can recognize scams. Um, and that's one of our biggest challenges. People feel that they are OK with scams because they, they think they can recognize them. But later on, you will see that it's actually not true. Uh, some interesting differences per country. In Japan, they are the least confident. And in Indonesia, 84% of the people think they can recognize scams. It's one of the most scammed countries. Um, in addition, what we've seen is that 59% of the participants at least get an email, WhatsApp message, Facebook ad, etc., once per month containing a scam. And uh, 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 nearly 20% actually receives at least a scam, most uh, a scam message uh, most days of the week. Also, here the frequency appear uh, uh, differs, but even the lowest countries like uh, Poland and Saudi Arabia report uh, that 40% of the people receive at least a scam message once per month. We also ask, is the volume of scams increasing? And there we got a clear yes. Uh, only 3% of the participants said they received fewer scam messages than the year before, and 45% said we are receiving more messages. Um, I very honestly expected as an online guy that uh, 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 the social media platforms, the online marketplaces would be the, the most used channels to scam people. That's actually not the case. In most countries, the phone, the text messages still rule as the most used media to scam people, followed, I have to say, by email uh, and instant messaging. Interestingly, 14% uh, of the Americans still receive e uh, uh, postal mails, snail mail uh, messages, uh, letters with scams. So the, there are huge differences uh, per country, but overall phone and text messages still rule. We also asked our participants um, which brands are being misused the most by scammers. And there I think for many of you, it will not come as a surprise that Facebook and WhatsApp, both owned by Meta, are named the most. But a very close uh, second is Gmail, which is owned by Google um, and also uh, other uh, 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 brands owned by Google are named quite a lot. Uh, also here, quite some change, uh, differences. Uh, I mean, TikTok is very popular in China and named a lot there. In Japan, to my surprise, Amazon is named a lot uh, for scams. So you see per country that there, there are small differences. But overall, Facebook and Google, logically uh, considering their market share, are named by far the most. The most, um, the biggest surprise to me was when we asked people, "Were you actually scammed in the last 24? Uh, sorry, in the last 12 months?" 
And there's 78% of the participants said that, yes, I've been scammed in one way or another in the last 12 months. Shopping scams being by far the most popular followed and that differs slightly per country, either by identity theft or by investment scams. Um, so the number of people actually being scammed is way, way higher than we expected. Um, what also surprised me is that, well, many people in, in the Western world are complaining about the rise of scams. Actually, the uh, countries which are developing like Brazil, Kenya, Argentina, South Africa, Southeast Asia and China, they are suffering the most from scams if you compare it to their GDP. Um, uh, in Kenya, we calculated that about 3.8% of the Kenyan uh, GDP is lost to scammers. Well, in most Western countries, this is less than 0.4%. Uh, we also see re-victimization as a big issue. Once a victim has been scammed, he's often scammed again in the same year. And that's actually nothing new. We have seen that with, uh, with Prime in the past as well. If a burglar comes into your house and steals your television, there's quite a big chance that after three months, he's back to steal your new television. And the same is being done with online victims. Once they've been victimized, their data is out there, it's shared on the dark web, and they're approached a lot more by scammers with different tricks to scam the victim anew. Why are people scammed? We see there are several reasons. Uh, the most common, uh, especially in developing countries, is I was attracted to the offer that was made. The offer was too good to be true, but I went for it. Um, in uh, the second most common reason is I simply did not recognize the deceit. What's interesting uh, is that, especially with people with a higher income or in richer countries, a for third reason pops up. Namely, I was not certain that it was a deceit, it was a scam but I choose to risk it. So people are more or less aware that there is a risk of being scammed, but they took the risk anyway. What is very concerning is why uh, the, the checks people are doing to see if it's not a scam. Uh, the rule, if it's too good to be true, is, uh, is very popular, but the most common way to check if a website is a scam is checking reviews. And 20 to 30 percent of all reviews are now fake. So it's a it's a big issue. We have educated people to check reviews while reviews is no longer a way to check if something is a scam. Even worse, in the beginning of this century, we told people to check uh, if the SSL certificate uh, was active. Uh, but now SSL certificates are free and any scammer is using them. So we have to be very careful on what we're educating consumers to check for, because a few, late, a few years later, that rule probably does no longer apply. Um, finally, one of our biggest issues is that scams are reported everywhere, if they are reported at all. Um, they're reported to the police, to the banks, to the telecom operators, to the social media platform. And as a result, because these organizations are not sharing that data, the scammer goes home free because uh, he can scam for a long time until uh, his website is known as a scam. Um, and that's one of the, 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 the issues we have as well, is that consumers are getting tired of reporting scams because they believe it doesn't make a difference, nothing is done with it. And we see actually that, for example, the Dutch police, and I fully understand uh, why they do it, is that 95% of the scams reported to the Dutch police. The Dutch police says, I'm sorry, it's a small amount. The scam happened uh, across the border. We cannot uh, uh, help you. In Belgium, there's even a law being developed where if the scam is less than 2,500 euros, the, scam, the police doesn't have to act on it. Meaning that as long as the scammer scams for an amount less than 2,500 euros, he goes home free. Uh, looking a little bit at the time, um, the number of scams being reported to law enforcement is only the tip of the iceberg. We estimate that globally only 7% of all the scams are reported, and that makes it a very popular crime because of the chances of getting caught are so low. As a result, in the UK, 
41% of all crime now reported to law enforcement are related to online fraud. In Singapore, this figure is already 50%, and we see a sharp growth across all the countries. Scammers are going professional. We see uh, now scam compounds. I mean, we all know about the Nigerian villages which specialize in advanced fee scams, in puppy scams, etc. But now in Southeast Asia, we see scam compounds. And please be aware that the next images might be shocking. People are really being beaten and forced to scam, uh, to scam people. Uh, very recently, a scam compound uh, was rolled up in the Philippines and there were 2,700 people from across Southeast Asia being forced to scam people. Um, with, and, they, and they were lured there by promises of easy work uh, behind a desk and paid well. Um, so this is one really is, is, uh, telling how professional the scam industry has become. United Nations estimates that worldwide about 300,000 people are being forced to scam other people in scam compounds. Another development, as you know, um, scamming is becoming very easy. You can buy a banking site for $90. Uh, you can buy an app which allows you to scam people uh, on, on a money app for a few bucks. So it, the, the technology is out there and scammers actually make money not by scamming people directly, but making tools which makes scamming very easy. Scammers are also becoming unrecognizable. Um, uh, maybe a, a, a quick question to the audience, and unfortunately I cannot see the, the chat screen, but um, is this email legit or not? And please put it in the chat, and at the end of my presentation I will see who got it right. Is this email really from Facebook, or is it a scam? I give you a, 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 a 10 seconds to look at it, and then we continue. I'm looking very much forward to the results. So apart from uh, phishing emails, we see that AI is now being used to uh, create products which do not exist. You can ask an AI algorithm to create a bat in the theme of Darth Vader, and it creates a unique product which consumers cannot compare to other products and as a result, they're buying something which does not exist and is also not delivered. We also see the first deep fake uh, applications appearing, especially in romance scams, where people believe they are speaking to a white elderly man. Uh, he is not. Um, and these deep fakes are really becoming very, very, very good. So at the moment, scammers are winning. Uh, we see that scams have become global business where uh, certain villages, towns, or uh, uh, communities are specializing in a specific kind of scam. We see Cyprus being very good at subscription scams. Israel is into the money recovery business, and they never recover your money. And my own country, the Netherlands, unfortunately has built up a, uh, a bad reputation in offering bulletproof hosting. Uh, as I said before, Scammers go home free. The World Economic Forum estimates that only 0.05% of all cyber crimes are actually being prosecuted. So it's actually very easy and cheap to set up uh, uh, online scams. Uh, it's quite rewarding and the chances of getting caught are, are near zero. So how can we turn the tide on scams? Um, a lot of effort and attention has been given to raising scam awareness. Um, while I do think raising scam awareness is always a good thing, it doesn't necessarily help. We see that many people who are educated on scams are becoming more confident, and because they're more becoming more confident, they start to take more risks online, and they get scammed anyway. The second reason why I think Scam awareness alone is not the answer, is that scammers are becoming too good. You can no longer see the difference. Uh, it's becoming impossible to recognize some of the scams. Actually, uh, we recently organized our own global anti-scam summit, and when, uh, my marketing manager, Sam, sent out a clear phishing mail. Uh, it had uh, uh, errors in it, uh, the email address was not his, uh, another typo, not a typo, bad logo, 
and we sent this email to the 250 people who were joining our summit. Um, 105 people actually clicked on the link and looked at the form because we were inviting them for a free dinner. And unfortunately, in that form, we also asked people for their credit card details because if you were not going to show up, we would charge your credit card. And we got six credit cards. Only one person got it right. He uh, uh, sent an email to me, you would never give a free dinner. It's a fake. And he uh, was right. But we did get six credit cards and had a lot of fun. Um, so more of the story is scams are a global problem and they need to be solved on a global level. And that's what Gaza does. We bring together all the stakeholders, banks, telecom operators, cybersecurity professionals, experts such as you, to share knowledge, to network, to research, and to really share data. Um, and we're currently working on our 10 recommendations to turn the tide on scams and making really concrete solutions to fight scammers better by sharing data, by working on better practices on online reporting, and by protecting consumers on an infrastructural level. What can we do together? Um, one of our dreams is building a global database of scams. Uh, currently, we only have domains, uh, but we are sharing those domains we get in from law enforcement, consumer protection organizations with as many companies as possible. Some of them using it to do uh, 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 know your customer business, others to identify uh, fake brands, uh, others to uh, use are using it in their internet filter or antivirus software. So what I would like to conclude with, please use our data to protect your users, your employees, your colleagues. Please share scam sites with us and please feel free to contact me to join our fight against scams by sharing your knowledge. And with that, I would give, uh, like to give back the floor to our chairperson. Thank you very much. That was fascinating stuff. Um, just to give you a quick uh, update on your little survey there, we had six or seven ah, yeah, what's, what's the result? scam. I think six or seven said scam. Uh, one person said it was due to the uh, email address, but then someone else said it was a legitimate email address. Uh, who said it was a legitimate email address? Uh, that was Eddie. Yeah. Eddie, congratulations, you're right. Of I don't course. know why <laughs> Facebook is using a different domain name than facebook.com to send this kind of emails, but you were right. Congrats. Thanks. 